Big Ten has officially accepted USC and UCLA's applications to join the conference. Both schools have then put out social media posts saying that they are joining the Big Ten. This has all been confirmed, of course, by our Dennis Dodd. Trojans and Bruins will start in the Big Ten starting in 2024. The remaining Pac-12 ADs and presidents are going to meet by phone on Thursday later to discuss the future of that conference, according to Dennis Dodd. We welcome Dennis Dodd and Tom Fornelli and Chip Patterson. And guys, um, let's let's start with what is happening here. What is happening between the Big Ten, which is no longer 10, obviously, hasn't been for a while, and what's happening to the Big 12 as we speak? Pac-12, pardon me. Yeah, this is it's a very this is a seismic shift. Another one that we've seen in the sport in the re recent years. We saw a couple of years ago, Texas and Oklahoma have opted to join the SEC. They'll be there in a few years. They might be there. Who knows? With this happening in the Big Ten, maybe that process gets sped up a little bit itself. But we are seeing what has seemed to be somewhat of a fait accompli for college football ever since the last round of conference realignment that led to the Big Ten expanding to 14 teams and the SEC expanding to 14 teams. At the time, the big you know panic was, oh, we're heading for an era of four super conferences filled with 16 teams. Well, now we've got two of them, and odds are they're not done. What we could be looking at is two kind of like Super League situations or two giant powers in the Big Ten and the SEC who do dominate the overall revenue compared to their other Power Five brethren, kind of vacuuming up all the big brands from the other Do Power Five conferences with the future goal of just being the two of them fighting for superiority. And as far as the Pac-12, obviously, losing USC and UCLA is huge. You're losing two of the programs that have been in your conference since the beginning. You're losing the LA market. And to be honest, you're probably going to lose more schools here in the near future. I don't think it's I, I will not be surprised at all if the Big Ten, if now that's at 16, what's the difference between 16 and 20 at this point? I wouldn't be surprised to see the Big Ten grab another couple of West Coast schools to pair with USC and UCLA to help offset some of the travel concerns because the closest school to either of them right now in the conference is 1,500 miles away in Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, the arms race is on, and the Big Ten is offering a response to the SEC adding Texas and Oklahoma. Because when the SEC got to 16, they didn't do it by picking up someone from the American Athletic Conference or pulling someone from below. No, they got some of the most iconic brands in all of college sports to be able to expand their league. And now the Big Ten, which is the only other conference that can even say that it exists in the same plane as the Southeastern Conference in terms of financials and in terms of some of the success on the field, well, they just went and got a pair of iconic brands. And Tom did a, a great point to mention the Los Angeles market, because while there are certainly going to be some travel concerns, what it means for that TV deal is only going to increase the amount of money that is being paid out to these Big Ten schools in a way that is going to further separate the Big Ten from the rest of the conferences in college sports. And so I see this really as, like Tom said, probably not the last last move that the Big Ten makes, but certainly it is a retaliatory move as the SEC went in the middle of the night and got Texas and Oklahoma, ripped them away from the Big 12. Well, now the Big Ten goes and gets two of the most iconic properties of the Pac-12, two founding members of that conference, and is able to get them away. Uh, I think it is something that very much speaks to what a lot of people have been pointing at, which is these two conferences, the SEC and the Big Ten, simply pulling away uh, finances, size, strength, overall power in college athletics, just pulling away from uh, the rest of Division I. Yeah, Chip, let me continue with that idea. And by the way, just to recap, the, uh, the Big Ten has brought in now USC and UCLA. The conference has accepted the schools. The schools have accepted the bids to join the Big Ten. And much like you were saying, that LA, the number two market in the country, just like the Big Ten went after Rutgers, let's not kid ourselves, that was because New York looms just over the river, you know, from Piscataway, New Jersey, just like Maryland brings in the DC market. Now the Big Ten goes nationwide. What does this all lead to, Chip? You kind of, you guys have both started talking about it. Are we going to end up seeing basically two mega conferences, the Big Ten and the SEC, that become their own thing? Does it stay in the NCAA? Do they break away and form their own thing? Where are we headed here? 
I think we're heading to a place where the conferences mostly get to govern themselves. And I think that that is probably something that does exist outside of the NCAA's purview. I think that some of the schools in the MAC or some of the schools in the Big South or some of the schools at the FCS level, they don't want to have those schools voting on what these SEC and Big Ten schools can do. They want to be able to make their own rules. They want to be able to say how many coaches can be on a staff, how many scholarships you can give out for your football program program, how many visits you can take. They don't want to have to play by the same rules because they are not playing the same game. Now, what does it mean in terms of even the Big Ten and the SEC? Well, that depends on where this stops, because if we don't stop at 16 and we get to 18 or we even get to 20, do you even need non-conference games if you have a 20-team conference in college football? I don't think so. Maybe there's a postseason. Maybe we still have the bowl games. There's probably an expanded college football playoff, but non-conference regular season games are probably not a high priority if you have a 20-team conference. And so for me, I think that for sure we are looking at these two conferences entering a new future where they don't have to play by the rules of everybody else and they get to govern themselves for the most part. My real curiosity is how the rest of these conferences respond and whether or not anyone else gets to join the Big Ten and the SEC in this new autonomous land landscape where they are existing in an entirely different world. Yeah, the, the NCAA, as far as it relates to the Big Ten and SEC football, it's done. It has no future with those two conferences. They are not really going to be conferences in the future as much as they're going to be professional football leagues, whether they call it that or not. It's essentially the model that they're following and what they're becoming. And I don't think they're done. I think that if you look at this first move, like I was saying earlier, I think the Big Ten is going to look to add more schools. Now, depending on who you listen to, some of the reporting from today has said that USC and UCLA came to the Big Ten with this idea, and the Big Ten, you know, not being morons, were like they were interested in hearing them out, and obviously they they agreed to do it. But I think if I'm the Big Ten, my next move, I'm finally going after Notre Dame. And I know Notre Dame has connections with the ACC, but something that was floated out there earlier today, USC, UCLA, now that they're joining the Big Ten, they stand to make about $100 million annually. That's been some estimates based on what we could get from the new Big Ten television deal, what these schools could be earning. If you look at the ACC and its grant of rights and the contract it is in, it will cost schools roughly $100 million to get out of their grant of rights with the ACC. So if you're going to be able to make that in one year in the Big Ten, if I'm the ACC, I'm terrified that the Big Ten is coming after me next. I think they're going to go at Notre Dame because if you are Notre Dame, the one thing that has kept you from joining a conference throughout your entire history has been that you want to be able to schedule independently and play your traditional rivals, USC, Stanford, teams in the Southeast. Well, guess what? You join the Big Ten at this point, USC is now a conference member. Stanford could be a conference member. I wouldn't be shocked if the Big Ten, one thing that gets overlooked here with USC and UCLA, and has been the case with all Big Ten expansion, the schools they add are all members of the AAU, which is a collection of research institutes. It's academics. It's stuff that I don't understand. But it says, it's the way of saying we're good schools. There are a couple of those schools in the ACC as well, North Carolina. Duke, Virginia, Georgia Tech. I don't think the Big Ten is done. I think the ACC, Big 12, and Pac-12 are teetering on the edge. I will right, definitely have to get to the fight in Irish part of this equation in a second. But let's just recap the big news. UCLA and USC are leaving the Pac-12. They will be joining the Big Ten in 2024. Dennis Dodd, our very own, one of the first to corroborate all the particulars on this story. We welcome Dennis in. Dennis, I'm going to pose the question to you that I posed to Tom and Chip uh, just a moment ago. Where are we headed with this? Oklahoma went last year to the SEC. Our news of it broke. There are only a few schools left on, you know, that, that had leverage, that had possibilities to do something after that. Clemson, Miami, Florida State, USC was one of those. Notre Dame is one of those. Now we're seeing the other, like you guys talked about, we're seeing the other shoe drop here with USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten. And I'm told this may not be over. Tom, you're right. Uh, I think you have to look at Oregon and Washington. The, U, the Pac-12 presidents and ADs are meeting by phone as we speak to see which way they go forward. And if they lose Oregon and Washington, that's the end of the Pac-12. I think after the USC-UCLA news, 
and that there are 32 teams at the top now that could stage a credible national championship playoff, you're gonna you're looking at the loss of the, the first major college conference uh, since the Big East in 2013. So I, I think that's definitely on the table whether Oregon or Washington leave or not, because there's no there there. You know, Russ, you mentioned the, the second biggest market in the country, LA. That's a donut hole now. There's nothing there. You know what the next biggest market is? Phoenix. So maybe I just got off the phone, maybe a, you know, Arizona schools to Big 12, but I was told right now, there's no hurry for the Big 12 to do anything. They don't see any value in the schools that are left in the in the Pac-12. So right now, I think the, the biggest story is that the, the obviously the SEC and Big 10 have consolidated power in any metric you want to name. The second story is this may be it for the Pac-12. Yeah, look, there once upon a time, and now it does seem like in a galaxy far, far away, uh, conferences seem to be geographically set. The Big East was, well, it was in the Northeast. The ACC was mid-Atlantic. The SEC, the Southeast, and so on. Now we're throwing up a map of what the Big Ten looks like at the moment with their originals in the colors and then the newer members of the group in, in, the, in the lighter colors with Rutgers and Maryland all the way on the East Coast from New York and sea to shining sea with USC and UCLA down in Los Angeles, California. The days of regional conferences are certainly over. That begs the question though, is this just a monetary decision by revenue sports? Is this only football and basketball or are all the Olympic sports and all of the quote unquote non-revenue sports involved in this as well? And how are they gonna make up for the money that it's gonna cost to get the men's and women's soccer teams or the wrestling teams across country for conference matchups in season? Well, when you're making 80 to a million, you know, to $100 million a year, does it matter? Um, I, when I get off here, I'm going to be on the phone with UCLA officials, and I'll ask them about the minor sports. But, yeah, they'll be able to afford to travel those teams east. Uh, what I don't want to hear is, you know, what about the academics? Because they've thrown that out the window. West Virginia, West Virginia plays 980 miles from its nearest opponent in the Big 12. Back when the Big East was trying to reorganize, they had teams playing from the East Coast to San Diego State before that fell apart. And now it's a reality where USC and UCLA student athletes will be traveling to Rutgers in New Jersey, three over 3,000 miles to play games. So in answer to your question, Russ, yes, it's absolutely about the revenue sports. And it's about one revenue sport, football. Because as good as basketball is at UCLA, uh, football drives the bus at every school, including Kansas, the likes of Kansas. So this is about consolidating power, consolidating brands. I said before this that the SEC had the best, uh, I guess, group of brand schools ever in the history of college athletics. Now you got to include the Big Ten. They've they've added the two biggest, and now everything else is uh, is up to them. You know, I think they control college sports right now. Right, as long as these big checks are coming from conference deals, which are with the television providers, like as long as that is the chain of where the money is coming from, you figure out what happens with the rest of your sports later. And the reason why the dollar values continue to go up is, as Dennis mentioned, because of football. So yes, it is in a super cynical sense, all about money. It is all about consolidating power. It is in a sense, greed. But I do think that there is a lot of acting in self-interest and that has been the theme throughout all of college athletics, really going back to the pandemic when all of the conferences refused to act together, when individual universities even had trouble within conferences to act together. Everyone sees that the future of college sports is changing and it is uncertain and everyone is acting in their best interest and USC and UCLA they are acting in their best interest that is getting out of the Pac-12 and into the Big Ten where they could be making, as experts have predicted, triple the amount of money that they were making in the Pac-12. That means you can deal with the travel headaches later because you are in an entirely different ballpark in terms of the money that is coming into your university and your athletics department. Yeah, it's this is a simply a case of grab the money now we'll figure the rest of it out later. And the money will help you figure it out. But I think, honestly, what worries me more than anything is, yes, this is a money grab. Football is going to be fine. Basketball is going to be fine. In fact, they'll probably thrive and make even more money in the future. But as far as the costs for you know volleyball teams traveling you know from Los Angeles to East Piscataway, New Jersey, to play Rutgers, 
I think the most likely outcome from this is we are going to see far fewer Olympic sports programs at these schools as they fi- they start to figure out, you know, we're not really doing an academic thing anymore anyway, so we don't really need these programs. They're just losses for us on our ledgers and in our budget. We're getting all the money we're ever going to need from football and basketball, and we're going to start seeing some of these smaller sports go by the wayside. Big money college sports, it is uniquely American, and it is changing as we speak at the moment. Uh, Chip, Dennis, and Tom, thank you guys so much. I'm sure we'll be checking back in when the next seismic shift happens in college sports, and that could be any time pretty soon. But for the moment, the Big Ten has added USC and UCLA, and the distance from those campuses, roughly from Los Angeles, to say, you know, they want to go play in Lincoln, Nebraska, that's a short trip, only about 1,500 miles. You're talking going to College Park to take on the Terps. Just outside D.C., we're looking more like, you know, 26, 2700 miles on that trip. It's even tougher to get to State College, by the way, because you're talking about a flight and then a kind of a long drive from there. Should be interesting, but the Big Ten is getting even bigger on this day. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.